and welcome to Health Talk. Today's topic is going to be the Intensivist Program at Olean General Hospital's Intensive Care Unit. In the following program, Dr. John Hoyt, an intensivist at Olean General Hospital, will explain the importance of having intensivists on hand who are specially trained physicians that provide critical care 24 hours a day to patients in the intensive care unit. Olean General Hospital is now amongst the 15 to 20 percent of the hospitals across the country that have these elite physicians to better serve your health care needs. When you talk about a critical care physician versus you talk about an intensivist, there, there can be a real difference there. I mean, you can have a critical care physician who just works as a consultant. They visit you in the ICU and they may render an opinion in the chart about you in the ICU, but they don't live in the ICU. They don't stay there all the time versus an intensivist that has a clear job description to it. An intensivist is somebody who devotes their entire clinical time to managing patients in the intensive care unit. It's like emergency medicine. If you are involved in an auto accident and you go in any emergency room in the country, you're confident there will always be an emergency medicine physician in that emergency room or the state wouldn't allow them to call it an emergency room. And yet in 80% of intensive care units in this country, if you go in the ICU, there's no doctors there uh, because there has not been this practice of devoting your professional career to staying in the ICU and caring for all the patients in the ICU the way emergency medicine physicians stay in the emergency de department and devote their career to the department. There was a paper that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association that was uh, done at Johns Hopkins and what they found was that the outcomes in the hospital with full-time intensivists had much lower lengths of stay, uh, much lower death rates, much lower complication rates like renal failure, cardiac arrest, uh, congestive heart failure. I mean, all the things that were measured showed statistically significantly better outcomes by having intensivists there. An ICU patient in a hospital without an intensivist might have seven or eight or nine different doctors that are all involved, all seeing the patient, all writing notes, but not staying in the ICU. So the, the nurse then, if a patient gets into trouble, the, the nurse detects the problem, but they, they can struggle trying to figure out which of those eight or nine doctors do I call uh, and, and explain that there's a problem uh, going on. In the case of having an intensivist there, then the nurse and the intensivist are partners. If the nurse sees a problem, the nurse calls the intensivist who goes to the bedside and they immediately take care of the problem. So in hospitals without intensivists, the care tends to be fragmented and it tends to be delayed. There are 6,000 hospitals in the country. Um, 15 to 20 percent of those 6,000 hospitals um, have something like an intensivist program. The rest of them don't. The rest of them use the consultation model, which ends up, as I mentioned before, in some delayed treatment and fragmented care. The patients, sometimes the patients are too sick to notice who is there, but who really notices who is there is the family. They come to you and they talk to you, you keep them informed, and they're much more uh, comfortable that their family member has one person who is there in charge and they can always get the answers they want from one person and somebody is coordinating the care that's going on. 
it is a big factor in improving nurse satisfaction. The, the ICU is a place of uh, immediate gratification. You know, the nurse sees a problem, the nurse wants it fixed appropriately, wants it fixed right away. And with the partnership between the nurse and the intensivist, this happens right away. And the nurse feels that he or she has done a much better job during the day because they've gotten, they found somebody who will listen to them and somebody who will fix the problem right away. If uh, this is a general surgeon uh, who's performed a large operation on a patient, uh, that general surgeon benefits from the presence of the intensivist because now they can go to the operating room and they don't have to worry that they're going to be called. Or they can go to their office hours and they don't have to worry they're going to be called because there's always somebody there at the bedside. They come by in the morning, they meet with the intensivist, uh, they go over all the details of uh, where the patient is that day. They set up a mutually agreed upon plan uh, for how the patient will be treated. And then the surgeon can leave comfortable uh, that he can trust the intensivist who's there to do the right thing in managing his or her patient in the ICU. The community benefit, and uh, in, in Olean is a is a good example of that. I mean, this is a it's a small town. Um, the nearest big town is uh, either Erie or Buffalo. Uh, both of them are about an hour uh, away, or if there's a lot of snow on the ground, it's even longer than that. Um, so you're now able to keep many more patients in the community because there is a, an intensivist in the ICU who is fellowship trained and has the competency to take care of the complexities of respiratory failure or cardiac failure and they you don't have to ship the patient out of the community to a, a larger community in order to get uh, high quality state-of-the-art care. One of the major messages that I would give to the public would be that now here in Olean, it's okay to stay in the community. The quality of care is going to be good. And it's okay if you have a family member in the ICU to ask to talk to the intensivist. They are there and they're there for you and for your family member. There is a bit of a movement uh, going on now for more and more uh, smaller community hospitals to do this. Not only is it progressive, it's an investment on the part of the hospital uh, because Having intensivist programs can be expensive and the hospital has to invest in those programs. But the end result of doing so is higher quality of care, more patients staying in the community, the case mix index of the patient in the hospital goes up. So you're seeing around the country a lot of hospitals that are 200 and 300 beds that are choosing to make this investment uh, to, for all those reasons of quality of care and, and better serving the community. For more information about intensive care services at Olean General Hospital, please visit www.ogh.org. We'll see you next time on Health Talk.